The Creality Ender 3 Max is the best large 3D printer in 2021 for your budget. Why do I think that? Let's find out today. My name is Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. So right in the beginning of this video, I'm going to say I do believe that this is the best large 3D printer in 2021 for your budget. Right now, at the time of this filming, this printer is only $299. That is absolutely awesome for a 300 by 300 by 340 print volume. I tell you, I started with the basic Ender 3 and this is like the big brother you never knew it had. This thing prints absolutely great, just like the Ender 3 always did for me. And it pretty much resembles just a big version of an Ender 3. Assembly is super easy. It is eight bolts total, I believe. It's two in each side. And yes, it's in the sides of this one. They don't go up from the bottom, which is really cool. Two for the screen, two for the power supply. Then you plug in your cables and you're good. So as far as assembly goes, 15 minutes tops once you get it out of the box. It's very, very fast. So without further ado, let's go through the features that I believe make this the best large 3D printer in 2021. So I've been using my Ender 3 Max for a couple weeks now, and I gotta say I really like it. The bed size on this is 300 by 300 by 340, and it's perfect for almost all of the projects that I choose to do. Now it does come with this Creality stock uh, glass here, and I gotta tell you what, this is the flattest glass that I've seen Creality come out with yet. It is super flat, uh, very level, and just some awesome, awesome glass. A matter of fact, I saved the best part for you guys, and here you go. It has the metal extruder with the filament runout sensor, so you don't have to worry about your filament running out or breaking because this will definitely catch it. Uh, and the benefit of the metal extruder on this one is that cheap plastic arm on the plastic extruders won't break on you. The only thing I don't like, and I wish they would do a little bit different on these, is put in a removable Bowden coupler right here because this one right here doesn't appear to be removable, and if that ever goes bad, we'd have to get a whole new extruder. The upgraded hot end features dual cooling fans here, each with their own fan duct underneath, which is great for cooling those prints, and a silicone sock right here to keep that filament off of your hot end from underneath. Another cool thing that they added to the Ender 3 Max here is this anti-backlash nut. I believe this is the first Ender 3 that actually comes with a backlash nut built in from Creality, and that's really cool because that's gonna stop your gantry from falling all the time. Even if I put pressure on it like this with my fingers, it's not just gonna fall down. One of the things I really loved about the CR6 SE was the spool holder it came with, and Creality sent that same spool holder now with the Ender 3 Max. I absolutely love this spool holder. I think these are the ones that should be with all their printers that have side mount spools like this. It does come with a 350 watt Meanwell power supply, so that is great power for this machine. Another great thing it comes with is the yellow upgraded springs. That is really awesome because that means the springs are going to be stiffer and it's going to hold your bed level for longer. In true Ender 3 fashion, it comes with the basic Creality screen. I really like the uh, Ender 3 V2 screen, but this one is good too. It has a lot of functionality and when you do the firmware update on this, it'll actually make it easier because you don't have to upgrade this screen. I saved this for you. The silent 32-bit board with 2208 drivers sits right under this panel right here, and this machine is very silent. So the first print I did was the reciprocal vase by Clockspring 3D. Now I had to disable the power loss recovery feature in Marlin to make this work right, and I'll link a video below to Brian Vines who walks you through that step. It's pretty simple. This vase came out absolutely amazing, and it's done in translucent dark red from Alien 3D. 
If I zoom in here, you can see just how beautiful this vase really did turn out. Naturally, the second print I went to was the brand new Hot Makes Clockspring 3D Torture Toaster. And I printed this in Prusa Galaxy Black. As you can see in the back, Clockspring 3D Hot Makes, the uh, logos came out absolutely awesome there. If we spin this thing around, you can see inside of there, uh, this actually fell out the 0 0.05 peg and I lost it, <laughs> so I'll have to find it to put it in there but they do move, which is very awesome. The printer really did a great job printing this with just that default profile from Prusa Slicer. If we spin this around this way, you can see the overhangs and the cooling. Those uh, dual fans really, really help with your overhangs up in here. Uh, the, the cooling on that just is awesome for prints like this on a torture test. And last but not least, yes, the toast does pop. But this is the Ender 3 Max, and while this is an absolutely awesome torture toaster, it came out very, very good, it's time to go bigger. So we amped it up to 225%. This one came out absolutely awesome as well. Uh, if we spin this around, you can see, again, the logos in the back came out great. Of course, everything is blown up, so the tolerances are not gonna be the same. It's not exactly a torture test when you blow up all the tolerances as well. But everything moves, it opens up, you can um, move pretty much all of them all the way almost down to the point one, and I didn't wanna break it. But all of these move in here. I did have some weird layer issues in this one. It's kinda of hard to see that, but uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Kind of a weird layer issue there. But other than that, this thing came out really good. If we spin this thing around, and open this door. Again, you can see those overhangs in there came out awesome. Uh, the circles, everything in here came out really nice at this size. Now this is 225% and yes, the toast does pop. Gotta do that. But to give you an idea, if I bring this one in, that is the 100% torture toaster. And that sits uh, very well inside of the 225% Toacher Toaster. Now this did take just about four days at 0 0.02 layer height, and uh, it was worth every ounce of that filament. Uh, I used a Coex 3D Mystery filament. It happened to be yellow. I liked that a lot because of the color. It was very bright. And uh, all of the links for the filaments I used will be in the description below. Next thing we need to talk about is the profile. So all I did is I went into Prusa Slicer and I use Prusa Slicer almost exclusively now unless I have to use something different. And I grabbed the Ender 3 V2 profile that is stock in Prusa Slicer. I changed the bed size to 300 to 300 to 340 and saved it as the Ender 3 Max under that name. That is the only changes I made uh, for the profile on this printer so far. And as you can see, uh, we just got really awesome results so far. I think that if this thing is dialed in, you're gonna get just amazing results. Now that you've seen everything, you can probably see why I think this is the best large 3D printer in 2021. Now, why do I keep saying large? Well, I tell you what, that's because the word large is subjective to whatever you think it could be. Now, I have a Prusa Mini, which I absolutely love as well, but it's relatively small build surface. Uh, this, compared to a, a standard Ender 3, is a pretty good sized build surface. Almost everything I print will go on here. Now, there are gonna be some people that need the really large build surfaces. I'm talking like 400, 400 by 500 or something like that. And that is kind of the outlier. I think a lot of people could get by with something like this. So I think 95 or more percent of everything you print will probably never take up the full area you actually have to print on this printer, which is really cool. I mean, if you think about it, the CR10 is just a little bit bigger and that's because it's taller than this. And it's way more expensive than 299. So if you're looking for a second printer, if you're looking to get another one and maybe you already have an Ender 3 or an Ender 3 V2 and you want another printer to add on, I'll tell you what, take a strong look at the Ender 3 Max. You can do tons of different um, upgrades to it. As you can see on the one on my right, I actually already have the TH3D Tough Tube in this one here. We're gonna do some videos on firmware. We're gonna do some videos 
if you want on the tough tube. And I got new flex plates coming for both of these because I absolutely love the TH3D flex plates. With all of the features packed into this thing, I really think for $299, actually I think $329 is the price normally, uh, even that is outstanding for what you get here. If you have any questions about the Ender 3 Max, don't hesitate to put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your questions are or comments if you have one of these. I hope you guys learned something today and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, if you liked the video, give me that thumbs up. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button right here and click the bell right over here if you want to get notified anytime we go live on Monday for Hot Makes or another great video like this comes out. You guys are awesome.